Shit gets spread around. Really nasty shit. In my case, this shit was a little powder called 25i NBUME. It was the night of an art festival right in the middle of downtown. The place was crowded like a motherfucker. You literally could not walk a foot in front of you without clashing into someone else. My boy V was standing there beside me the entire time. We make our way to an alley to do up the chop. I knew that this research chemical was about 16 times the potency of 2CI, but really, what the fuck do I know? I didn't know shit. I didn't know that snorting $20 worth would have sent me flying to the hospital, a pathetic little bump. We head off to find a nice secluded chill spot to come up. The drug is hitting me lightning fast. Within 10 minutes, I can already feel my entire torso tighten, most likely my blood vessels constricting. We meet up with the rest of our group and settle down behind a nice church, and within 20 minutes, a bunch of cops show up kicking us out. Wandering the crowded streets, I knew I was in a bad situation. My eyes are assaulted by colorful kaleidoscopic geometric shapes. I was ravaged by the visuals. At one point, there is literally nothing in my periphery that is not completely clouded with psychedelic hallucinations, and at that moment, my boy V looks at me and says, let's just get lost, with the biggest grin on his face. This is about the part where I start to black out and the ground fell from beneath my feet. I try to keep a close eye on V to make sure I didn't lose him. Oh shit, I think I just lost him. Wandering around in an intoxicated daze, I black out completely. On that night, the small part of my mind that was barely hanging on to reality only caught a few flashes of red and blue lights and a few vague faces here and there. I distinctly remember my friend Jay looking into my face, yelling at me, trying to tell me something. I was so fucked up a friend had to call an ambulance, and in just a few confusing split seconds, I wake up in a hospital. The trip, aka what was going on inside my head during the blackout. I was in hell, not hell in the traditional fire and brimstone sense of the word, no steaming hot lakes of sulfur, no pain, no torture, nothing. But that was it, the feeling of being in hell was literally nothing. I was trapped in this hole I couldn't crawl out of, every time I tried to escape I just sank deeper and deeper. I could not sense anything other than complete and utter blackness. Any sign of life or existence would have been Disneyland compared to this, but there was no life. Not even a rock or a single blade of grass. Just nothing. I'd gladly shake hands with the devil rather than be in the state. A tiny fraction of my consciousness was still aware, however, still alive to witness my imprisonment. As I am painfully shoved further and further into the abyss, I begin to hear a very high-pitched scream. At first, I disregard it as nothing. Like a shadow, it creeps up on me. It gets louder and louder and deeper and deeper. When I try to focus on it, my head feels as if it's being rocketed into a concrete floor face first by some unknown force, a force whose sole purpose is to inflict pain. The imagery of me falling into the ground plays over and over again in my vague imagination, but the screaming just becomes more and more intense. I'm reminded of nails screeching across a chalkboard, the clashing of metal and glass in a high-speed car collision. This sensation overwhelms me, and it soon cramps my every orifice with discomfort. The bashing has now become a constant pain, replaying the image of myself falling into the concrete, each time faster and louder, and a thousand times more powerful. The intensity continues to rise, and the quagmire of stimuli slowly materializes into a chaotic fuckfest of naked and violent imagery. I can feel in my head a graphic image of bloodiness and brutality, but somehow I still cannot make out anything as a recognizable image. As if in a flash, everything, all this fucked up shit I'm taking in, boils down and manifests into one question. I feel the presence of a nurse-like figure looking at me. She asks, what is that? To which I heard the response, not really much of anything. I die, I pass on into the great beyond. A hook plunges through my body and yanks me out of that deep, depressing hole. I am hauled out with an indescribably furious power. A carpet, made with magnificently elaborate embroidery, has been yanked straight from underneath my feet. I see a desolate wasteland and a tiny speck of life. A tiny speck of my own consciousness is squeezed and churned out of the world in a ruthless manner. I pulled back thousands of kilometers and bear witness to the vastness of the earth. I pulled back millions of light years and bear witness to the vastness of the solar system. 
I am pulled back millions of light years more and bear witness to the vastness of the galaxy and the billions of solar systems contained within it. I am pulled back an astronomical distance and bear witness to the vastness of the universe and the billions of galaxies that are contained within it. I am yanked out even further only to be exposed to the sight of the billions of universes that constitute something I can only guess would be the multiverse. As I give in to astonishment one last time, I become dumbfounded as I'm dragged back only to look upon the incomprehensible vastness of the clusters of these bubble-like shapes that contain within each one of them a multiverse. In a seemingly effortless process, the bubbles change and manifest into cells. These mutated multiverse cell bubbles start to come together. They group more and more until they have manifested my entire body. I understand the answer. I understand what not really much of anything truly means. And as I gain this knowledge, this transcendent piece of wisdom, everything explodes into a bright white light. I open my eyes for the first time and see the most beautiful rays of white sunlight shine on my face. I listen and hear the most profoundly beautiful music as if it was the first time I had ever listened to anything. I felt as if I was being held and stroked by an angel, my muse, as if she was the most nurturing and gentle woman in the world, whispering in my ear, relax, something has happened, you are in a place of healing, everything is going to be alright. I can feel her gentle hand caress my heart. As I become more aware of my surroundings, my body shifts back and forth between my physical body and the billions of bubble-like cells. I can feel her stroke, her affectionate love engorge each and every one of those cells. And then, I take my first breath. I inhale life. But it is not just my lungs, it is also my arms, my legs, and every single cell in my body that takes a breath for the first time. I feel the essence of pure energy and life and oxygen flowing through each and every one of my cells. I feel like I'm absorbing stimuli of each and every one of those cells at an individual consciousness and I was collectively interpreting all of them. I am born a second time as if I had never been born before. Now here's where it gets really fucked up. At the same time all of this is happening, literally in the exact same time frame, an idea formulates in the back of my mind, a dead rotting rat carcass. A potent odor is steaming off of its body, the skin has begun to decompose, its insides are completely mutilated as if it was trapped in an airplane turbine. The idea and image of the creature becomes increasingly visceral, it almost feels as if this grotesque pile of waste is coming for me, as if it is a part of me. The hook lodges itself into my mind and yanks. As I'm flying upwards, I feel the rat carcass brutally rip off the back of my mind. Time freezes, a part of my consciousness floats above my head and rises only a couple inches. I look down at my body, and then my face. What I saw when turned around, I will never forget. I looked at my face and recognized it as my own. It was placed, however, adjacent to the rat's face. There they stood, side by side. They seamlessly morphed together until half of my face was my own and the other half was the rats. There was no definitive line separating where my face ended and the rats began. I was revealed to myself what I truly was. Not really much of anything. Walking out of that hospital, I'd never felt so vulnerable in my entire life. On the 11th of March, a group of my friends and myself decided it would be a good idea to get some LSD. Unfortunately, however, we could not get hold of any, so we got 25i and BUME. We got it in a nasal spray bottle and about 5 or 6 of us took a couple hits each. After 15 to 20 minutes, we all started feeling really ill and nauseous. I would like to say here that I have no recollection of what happened. Everything that I have typed out has been told to me by doctors, friends, paramedics, and people who saw the incident. At this stage, we were all having a bad trip. The people who had taken it thought they were going to die. My friend C came home from a party and this is when I told him that I do not feel well and that he needed to take care of me. So he did. He put me into bed and played Afferman for me, hoping that it would calm me down. He came back downstairs later to check on me and seen that I had rolled off my bed and onto the floor. When he tried to help me onto the bed, I got violent. Apparently I was charging to get out of the door. I must mention here that I am 110 to 120 kilograms and C would be half of that and he was the only one trying to keep me back in. I would do something aggressive, apologize for it, and then do something aggressive again. This cycle repeated for a while. 
Eventually, they got me back into bed and I fell asleep. I was snoring really loud. Every now and then, I would wake up and then pass out again. The second or third time I did this, C noticed something odd. I was no longer snoring. He entered my room and I had stopped breathing, completely gone blue in the face, and then a few moments later started having seizures. At this moment, the ambulance was called. The first paramedics to arrive on the scene sedated me in my bed and gave me adrenaline needles to keep me alive. They worked in my own room for a while. The entire way to the hospital, they were doing their best to make sure I didn't die. My seizure lasted for around 45 minutes. The paramedics thought I would either die or wake up with permanent brain damage. Even the doctors thought this. I am so lucky to be alive to this day. I woke up three days later in the hospital, not knowing where I was or what was happening. I had no recollection of that night. I was still tripping for the first few days there as well, but the trips were horrible. The doctors had put me in a coma so that the seizures would stop. All of my friends and family thought I'd either die or come out a completely different person. In total, I spent about nine days in the hospital. My CK levels were extremely high. They were taking five blood tests a day. I spent seven days in the intensive care unit. Two of my other friends were also hospitalized but released the next day. They were fine. I am not sure of what else to tell you except that it was a horrible experience. If you're going to try it, please be careful. I think it may just react with some people really bad. If you are enjoying these stories so far, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you're new. I upload videos at least three times a week now with also a full-time job, so I would be uploading more if I didn't have that. But yes. So if you like the dark and disturbing nature of drugs, please subscribe. And if you already are, thank you so much and I love you. Anyways, let's get to the next story. I had recently obtained a gram of 25i and BOME from a supplier from which I frequently purchase various novel psychoactive compounds. This was going to be the strongest substance I had tried next to LSD. I had tried it a few other times as blotters and a few times prior via vaporization and sublingual routes. I also came to realize that it absorbed very well through the skin when laying blotters for friends. This trip was entirely accidental and since I did not expect it, things went very bad very quick. It was a normal day, I had gone to work and was finally home. Plus, best thing of all, it was Friday. I worked at a finance company as a customer service representative which could be stressful at times. I usually came home to unwind and then experiment with a new substance or route of administration at this time. There were new chemicals coming out pretty much every week at that point. It was a perfect scenario for someone who has a high degree of novelty seeking and enjoyed experiencing new states of mind. I had just dissolved a gram of 25i NBOME in 500 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol the day prior, and I thought to myself that I should probably dye it blue to differentiate it from water. Being that it was summer, I was consuming a lot of water from bottles that were similar to this bottle of 25i NBOME. Somehow, due to my neglect, the bottle of 25i got mixed up with the bottle of water and I took it with me on a bike ride to the local park. I met up with some friends and we began to unwind to play hacky sack. A few of us went into the woods to smoke some cannabis. We came back from the woods and found that a few more strangers had joined our party, one of them a girl who wanted to ride my bike because it was a retro racing bike. I allowed her to do so and then we got to know each other a little bit. At some point I remembered I had a bottle of water to quench my cotton mouth that I had developed. I took a large swig and then, about 5 seconds later, I felt a stinging before I could swallow. Then it dawned on me what I had done. I spit the swig of N-bomb solution out, but it was too late. I announced very quickly what I had done to everyone, so if anything happened, we'd be all on the same page. At least there was one other person who knew exactly what 25i NBOME was and could help. I calculated the approximate dose I just sublingual to be 300 milligrams less than whatever didn't get absorbed. Suddenly, reality began to break. I looked at a tree and it was a layer, and the river in the background was another layer, and I was my own layer. It was as if everything had its own layer depending on where it was in my visual field. It was as if reality was sliced into different layers as if everything were a painting. Everything began to look surreal, but more vivid than normal at the same time. The girl and her friend went with me down by the river as the trip began to intensify. 
What have I done? I asked myself. The answer I already knew. I just didn't know how to fix the situation. My mental state began to deteriorate. I found a large ant walking across a rock that I was sitting on. I gave it a drop of the end bomb solution out of curiosity. The ant began to rub his feelers with his front legs as if he was trying to remove the solution. He then proceeded to walk and eventually he began to stand on his hind legs and put his front legs together as if he was praying to me, probably to make the experience stop I thought to myself. I felt terrible for if he felt anything like I did at the time, then I wished for his misery to end. Now he's going to die, I said out loud as I grew worried about the ant's condition. I, in essence, was in the same boat as the ant. The girl I was with replied, at least he got to trip before he died. I took this to heart, at least if this extreme dose of 25i NBOME killed me, I died doing what I loved, experimenting with novel substances. It grew dark and one of our musician friends came around. My best friend informed him of what had occurred and immediately the musician friend grew very concerned. How the fuck are you alive right now? I told him it was probably due to me having a tolerance since I had been playing with this compound for the past few days. He assured me that no tolerance can prevent death from such an overdose. I couldn't calm down, it was as if my soul wanted to escape my body, but instead it was bouncing around my insides trying to get out. So much nervous energy I couldn't channel it. I quite frankly can't remember how I got home, but I know that I must have biked down the main road through town. When I got home, I remember looking up information about MKUltra, and I convinced myself that the research chemicals that were being developed and distributed were a new form of this mind control program developed during World War II. I called my best friend at some point trying to explain my theory to him. He was shook. First, he wondered how I had heard of this program, so I explained. Somehow, it had surfaced to my conscious mind during this trip after being hidden away since childhood. I first learned of it when I was at my grandmother's house exploring the internet when I was 8 years old. I didn't understand the exact depth of what I was learning at the time, and I didn't realize that the knowledge I was learning had been hidden away from most textbooks. I digress. This realization of what may or may not be occurring bothered me deeply and my psyche began to shatter. I was further bothered by the fact that it was year 2012 and many social transformations were occurring. Protests were going on across the country and every day we were hearing about the minds having predicted the end of the world. There was also the fact that Anonymous had been hacking into countless websites and databases. As those who lived through this period remember, no one was safe. As my situation progressed and I became increasingly paranoid, the weekend came to an end and I had to return to work that Monday. Upon my return to work, I recall having many instances in which I told the customers the government was spying on them. I'm sure my supervisors were very concerned about my mental state. Psychosis had seemed to creep in at this point. This was beyond tripping. Eventually, I filed for FMLA and sought treatment at a psychiatric hospital that also specialized in drug dependency treatment. I remember having to explain what 25i NBOME was to the guy doing my intake. He was utterly confused because no one had heard of this drug. While there, I was given antipsychotics and SSRIs to reduce the impact of the drug, Prozac and Zyprexa. After two weeks of treatment, I was capable of explaining to the psychiatrist responsible for my care what my plan was once I left. He allowed me to go home as long as I continued to take my meds and seek treatment. After coming home, I quit my job without any good reason and began to work in a dirty warehouse. This is something that I regret to this day. I allowed 25i NBOME to sidetrack my entire career. Things would never be the same. When all my friends asked what happened, I often gave them the explanation. I tripped for 40 days and 40 nights. They were somewhat shocked by my response being such, but it's the response that felt most natural to me. I really had tripped for 40 days and 40 nights. When I looked at the calendar and tallied the days and nights, it was 40 of each. The fact that 40 days and 40 nights may remind you of the story of the flood that Noah survived in the Christian Bible is no surprise. This is what most people were reminded of when I told my tale. I, after having time to reflect, have somewhat amazed myself that this is really how long the trip lasted. Being someone not of religious background, I did not give second thought to telling people that I tripped for this amount of time. Again, this explanation just rolled off my tongue and held true. I actually came to learn that the number 40, according to many scholars, is representative of a time of testing or judgment by God. After coming to my senses, I became extremely fascinated by the experience and was much more open to religions in general. There had to be something to them if what I experienced just happened to me. 
Maybe a higher power was testing me, or maybe it was just the drugs activating the same part of the brain involved in religious experience. All in all, what I took from this experience is that one should always put safety first and die solutions blue before storing them. Also, I came to believe that there is definitely something more to the Bible and religions than meets the eye. I also discovered that my physiology is quite different than most people's, seeing as I miraculously survived this ordeal with minimal negative effects while others have died after having consumed much less. My friends still are amazed to this day that I am still alive, despite the fact that I am known by the closest people in my circle to have regularly taken heroic doses of many types of drugs with less effect than most, none of them expected me to come out of this relatively unfazed. Me taking upwards of 25 mg doses of 25 INBUME was not unusual, and I have done this multiple times on purpose, but this dose was an entire order of magnitude outside of my above average doses. I urge anyone reading to please be careful with such potent compounds. I also apologize because I feel I contributed to this substance becoming illegal the following year. I have had experience with psychedelics in the past, but none at all like this. I have had LSD once, MDMA three times, mushrooms six times, and salvia a few times as well. I picked up an H-strip of 25i and BOME from a dealer for $10. At around 11pm I took two tabs, then another somewhat on accident. I guess I wasn't thinking clearly, and yes I understand I took far too much. Anyways, my friend and I started to watch an anime, Sergeant Frog, and I recall telling her that I wanted to screw every female character on the show with much passion. I was having a great time, and 30 minutes later, I was on the floor staring at the ceiling talking about how amazing everything looked as the ceiling swirled with patterns. I saw geometric patterns of all colors layer over everything, much like a rainbow bee comb. I thought this was the greatest trip of my life. She switched the movie to the Lorax and at some point left to go home. I have no recollection of the next few hours, but I very vaguely remember my dad asking me in a very scared voice, Son, what did you take? I remember in my trip there being some conspiracy about something with hospitals and I was scared out of my mind. My next memory was being in a hospital, bandages around my right arm with a tube going into me. Both of my arms were bound down by restraints and there were these human looking aliens I believed all to be figments of my imagination wobbling around hooking me up to the EKG. On it I could see my heart rate extremely high, somehow I was able to recognize that. I didn't believe that I was in a real hospital, I thought I had been kidnapped or abducted by aliens, the doctors were fake and part of my bad trip and I thought they were trying to put things inside of my penis. I really don't know if they were but I couldn't touch it to find out. I was crying, screaming, and thrashing about so much that my arms bled from the restraints I was on. My mom was sitting by me and I told her that I drank 40 ounces and hung out at the bulb, neither of which were true. I also didn't believe that she was my mother and her face was morphing constantly. There seemed to be white wispy smoke like things trailing from everyone's bodies and there were designs floating in front of me. I was sweating and shaking through the night. In the morning, my mom told me that I was in the hospital and took too much drugs. I still didn't believe she was my mom and kept insisting that she call my real mom to tell her that I was in the hospital and okay. I found out that the IV that was in my arm gave me Ativan and my parents had found me at around 12am in the driveway, swinging my arms around and spinning in circles. They said I was knocking into things and knocked over the trash cans and bent the car mirror. I apparently also fell into the bushes a few times, my pants were wet with what I believed to be rainwater but could have very well been urine. Right now I have cuts and bruises on various parts of my body and I'm extremely exhausted, physically and mentally. I don't want to do drugs anymore, not even weed which I have loved dearly since I was 13. I know people will take this drug regardless of my report, so all I can do is advise extreme caution and consideration to the dose and if you really want it before doing so.